God, our Father, we we come thanking you for just showering your blessings on the Little Fellowship Baptist Church. We thank you for watching over your creation and bringing us as far as we have come. We know that you're still in the blessing business, and we thank you, Lord, for the 20 years that you allowed us to assemble in your name, recognizing that this Sunday, which is tomorrow, represent 20 years of love fellowship. And I thank you for the good, and I even thank you for the bad, the ups and the downs, but most of all, we thank you that you have showered your blessings upon us to assemble and call on your name. And we want to do everything we can to enhance the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. From the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter number 18, we'll be reading verses 35 through 43. Luke 18, 35 through 43. And it reads as follows. And it came to pass that as he was nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. And hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passes by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. And when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. Just for a few minutes, we'd like to talk on don't let the crowd steal your blessings. Don't let the crowd steal your blessings. For a subtitle we can use, God has enough blessings for all of us. God is not stingy with blessing his people. He know that we need help and he knew that we were gonna have all types of situations in our lives, but he knew that regardless of whatever came upon us, he was able to take care of the problem. And today we want to thank the Lord, as I said, for 20 years of church anniversaries at Love Fellowship Baptist Church. The Lord has brought us all the way. I would say a mighty long way, but in Him, He has brought us all the way. And we thank God that we've done what He told us to do, and maybe we didn't do it quite the way He had told us, but we're trying to get it right and follow Him and lead people to the throne of God. We know that right now we need a Savior. There's so much going on in the world, and I little bit if we can help somebody, that's what we are supposed to do. But here we see why Jesus is in the blessing business. He's blessing people everywhere he go. He blessed people. Blind people needed him as well as the ones that thought that they had 2020 vision. Some of us got 20-20 vision with our eyes, but we're blind in our faith because we are not doing what the Lord tell us to do. I see where God said he has enough blessings for everybody. When he came down, he said he was going to bless mankind. And if we think about it, sometimes the Lord will bless us when we won't bless one another. Amen. But even at that, he still loves us anyhow. And I want to thank him for being 
an awesome God. Amen. You know, I believe this blind man had heard of the things that Jesus had done because we knew he didn't have the ability to see with his natural eye, but he had heard some of the miracles that Jesus had performed and just knowing that Jesus was coming by that way, he wanted to do all he could to get Jesus' attention where he could get the blessings that he needed. And he positioned himself in the way or the highway or the road where when Jesus would pass by that he could find help coming from Jesus and just knowing that he heard the crowd and sometimes the crowd means well when they make a loud noise and just following the Lord it said make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands and serve him with glad tidings and as they was coming they heard about a lot of things that Jesus had done and they was just hollering and screaming and thanking the Lord that they got a chance to see Jesus one on one but here it is a man sitting there he might have had the ability to walk uh, maybe he could run but I'm sure he had to watch how he ran because he might run into a stumbling block but he knew he could sit and wait on the Lord and hopefully he'll get a chance to get his blessings that he needed and that Jesus was coming. I believe Jesus went that way just for this man. Amen. He went this way because he knew that this man needed help. And it sure. said that as Jesus was going by, there was a certain blind man that needed help. And said that he was sitting by the wayside and he was begging. And you know, begging, people belittle you nowadays when you beg. When I was raised up, my mom and daddy taught us not to beg nobody for anything, you know, but you know, people today, they make a living out of begging. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they got the ability to go out and get a job, and not everybody, some people are really out there for the right reason, but mm -hmm. most of them found out that they can sit on the wayside and beg and make more than we can if we go on a 40 hour a week job. Mm -hmm. But that's between them and their maker. Right. It's up right. to us whether we owe my heart and give it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, see the only thing that I can tell a person to try the spirit right. by the spirit. It's right. not for us to condemn. It's for us to do what the Lord tell us to do. And they said Jesus was coming by, and he probably had more blessings than they could imagine. And the blind man sitting there, and he heard a noise and. Uh, I remember a long time ago I heard a song said I heard through the grapevine, but this man heard for himself uh, uh, the sounds and the, the hollering and the billowing that Jesus of Nazareth was coming by. And he, he had the, 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 the ability to ask. He couldn't see, but he had a voice and he asked, oh, what, what do all of this mean? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He said, now I believe that I can get my blessings that I need. And uh, they said he started uh, hollering out. He started screaming, Jesus of uh, Nazareth, our son of David, have mercy on me. First of all, for him to call Jesus our son of David, he believed and he knew that Jesus was the Messiah that they'd been waiting on. Amen. Because they said that the Messiah was coming through the lineage of David. And they believed that all of the miracles that Jesus had been doing made him the, the Messiah and, and the son of David. So this man hollered out, thy son of David, have mercy on me. But it's amazing how people can even come to church and they don't want you to call out on the name of Jesus to get your blessing. You know, when you, when you come, Jesus, now I got blessings waiting on you. But first, I want you to make an effort to come to my house and I'll bless you. Now, he might not come when you want him, but he's always right going to be on time. Huh? You know, you can't force Jesus into doing nothing, but you can't slow him down either. He just said, believe in your heart and watch what I can do for you. You know, and this man sitting there and I believe he said, well, now, it's time for me to 
holler out and get my blessings. Uh, he, I heard about the blessings he's already done for the other people. I'm uh, not even going to deal with the, with the wine at the wedding. I'm gonna, not going to deal with him walking on water. I'm not going to deal with him uh, taking two fish and five loaves of bread. I just want to know that Jesus will you help me because I need help and I, I want to be one of your disciples. I want to follow you but I'm blind and I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm limited to what I can do now. Can you help me with my situation? Mm -hmm. Jesus heard the man. The man got the hollering and the disciples and all of them told him to be quiet. You disturb him. The master, leave him alone. Uh, let the master go and do what he's got to do. He's on his way through Jericho. Now, uh, you know, it was something about Jericho that said something about it. It was down by Samaria where the people, uh, most of them didn't believe her uh, in what the Lord uh, was going to do. They didn't believe that he was the Messiah. They didn't believe in uh, following him because they believed that uh, everything that they had, uh, they had from their God. Mm -hmm. But it's not but one God, uh, right. one maker and one creator. Now, they said to Jesus when he heard uh, the man's voice, uh, they telling him to be quiet. Uh, don't bother the master. Leave him alone. And he hollered out a little bit louder. <laughs> it ain't nothing wrong with hollering out. <laughs> See people tell you in the church, uh, be quiet. Uh, get tired of uh, seeing you jumping all around her. Uh, I didn't come to church uh, to hear you jumping around, but let me tell you something. Uh, Jesus told him a long time ago that if these uh, holy peace, uh, immediately the rocks uh, will cry out, uh, let them holler uh, and let them praise me. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you won't have me always. Uh, you better take me now because <clears throat> one day I'm going to have to leave this old earth. Uh, but I'm going to tell you that uh, I hear your voice and I hear you cry when you need me. Yeah. So all you got to do is uh, call on me. I'll be there to help you in your situation. Uh, not enough people in the the world uh, calling on Jesus yeah, today. Yeah. I want to tell the world that they uh, if you need help. He said, call and he said, I got enough blessings for all of you. I'm not limited to what I can do. And say something about when the blind man, uh, when the blind man got to hollering, uh, he hollered, I believe, uh, from the top of his voice. Uh, I know I would have been in that situation and uh, said something about he made a noise. Uh, and all the people, uh, they got angry because they wanted the focus to be on them uh, and not on this man. Uh, said something about Jesus hurt that man because uh, yeah. that man uh, needed help. And Jesus said, I came by this way uh, where I could help this blind man. Uh, said something about Jesus stopped. Uh, Right where he was at, and said, Bring him to me. And asked the man when he came to him, said, What do you need? He said, Why are you calling on me? He said, If I could just get my sight, I'll be all right. Jesus looked at him, said, Look at here, receive your sight. Your faith has made you whole. I can go back to Hebrews 11, and one is in faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. A lot of times, we can't get blessed because we want to be stuck up. We don't want to call on the Lord because we feel like that belittles us and we don't want nobody to look down on us. But let me tell you, the best place for a Christian is down on their knees. And you get on your knees and look towards him. You'll find out that he'll shower blessings yeah. down on you if you just let him have his way. Yeah. But you got to have faith in the Lord. Yes, I'm Sometimes uh, you might have what you want, uh, but I'm going to tell you something, uh, all the time, uh, the Lord's got what you need, uh, and I thank him right now for, for love fellowship uh, for 20 years. Uh, I know we've uh, had some ups, uh, and we've had some downs. Uh, we've had some good people come through. Uh, we had some to come through, uh, try to cause turmoil, uh, but look what the Lord did. Uh, he said, I'll be with you always, yeah, always. Uh, even until the end uh, of the world. Uh, don't worry about nothing. Uh, just keep on uh, calling on me, and when you feel like you're down and can't go no further, just wait, look to the hills, for which come your help, cause all your help come from the Lord, love fellowship, we've been blessed, we got blessing, we don't know that's waiting on us, that the Lord's gonna give us, all we got to do is come together as one, don't let nobody turn you around, don't let nobody separate you from the love of God, we got to be like David, when the 
David said, the Lord is my shepherd, yeah. and I shall not want. Yeah. I ain't got to worry about nobody giving me nothing. Everything I need, the Lord's got it. He's my maker. He's my creator. Yeah. He's my author. Yeah. He's my finisher. He's my race. Race in the middle of the race. Yes. When I get weak, he's strong. He picked me up when I'm down. Yeah. When I can't go no further, he put strength in my legs. Yeah. He put voice in my throat. He put love in my heart. He put the ability for me to forgive when I don't want to forgive. Mm. Love Fellowship, we have really been blessed. And I want to thank the Lord for all of you. We're going to get it stronger and we're going to get it better. Mm -hmm. We're going to do what the Lord tells us. Yeah. We think to, right now, say, people say, well, why can't we come together in the assembly in the church? We can't do it because this virus and these sickness and these deaths are causing us not to come as one in the church building, but we can come as one in the faith, in the spirit you're being, and following the Lord. Wherever you're at, we need to stay safe. We need to wear our masks and take our shots. I've already had both of my injections, and I thank the Lord, and I pray that you all do, and I pray that none of you get so sick that death take you out of here. But I'm going to tell you something. If you look back on where the Lord brought us from, he brought us from a mighty long way. And we're not going to give up on him. This pandemic can't keep us from serving God. Just because you lie at 525 Mead Avenue don't mean that the Lord is not blessing you. He's blessing you and he's blessing your families. Maybe you got somebody, you say, they're blind, spiritual. All you got to do is call out on the Lord. Don't let nobody tell you the Lord can't hear and answer prayer. If he couldn't do that, he wouldn't answer my prayer. I know sometimes I get to crying and I don't know what I'm crying about. He's telling me that I got blessings waiting on you all. You shedding tears right now thinking you don't have what you want. But you got more than a lot of people. Amen. You got more than you ever had in your life. Yes. Thank me for what I bless you with and watch what I can do with what you have. Malachi 3, verses 8 through 10, it talks about the blessings of the Lord. It says, well, a man robbed God. Mm -hmm. It says, you have robbed me with your tithes and your offerings. You don't want to give me what I'm doing. But I'm going to tell you something. It don't belong to you. Share with me and I'll share with you. And allow you to share with someone else. And I found out AZ, he wasn't just talking to the people, he was talking to the preachers. He was talking to the elders and the pastors and the bishops and all of them. They were misleading the people. And God didn't like it. He's talking there today because there's more churches today where the preachers are trying to just make a professional living out of preaching the word instead of doing what the Lord tell them to do. He said, what's right, I pay you. What's good, I give you. You don't have to set a charge on following me. You don't have to set a charge on telling my children what to do because I'm God all by myself. I'm blessing you where you can bless someone else, but you took it to another level. You took it to a level where you could pocket an increase for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it's about. He said, I'll give you the increase because I'm still God. But don't focus on money because for the love of money is the rule of all evil. Money is good, but salvation is better. And we want to thank the Lord for the spirit that this blind man had when he was calling on the Lord. And I believe somebody right now listening to the sound of my voice is crying out saying, Lord, have mercy on me. And if you are, just close your eyes. Because if he could hear the blind man and bless him, close your eyes, he can hear you and bless you. And repeat after me. 
if you will. Lord, have mercy on me, thou son of David. I need my sight. I can see out of my naked eye, but my heart is darkened. Please, Lord, give me sight in my heart and let me be what you have me to be. And I know that you're going to bless your creation, but right now I need a blessing where I can help your creation. Yes, and I thank you, Father, for hearing my prayer. You. And I thank you for blessing me that I could be a blessing for someone else. Yes, and even after Jesus had blessed this blind man, we see where he go a little further. And the people were still prejudiced because he was a tax collector by the name of Zacchaeus a publican, a rich man that had more than he needed. He wanted to see Jesus. He heard that Jesus was coming. See, sometimes hearing in your, your ears and your heart can get you blessed. The blind man heard that Jesus was coming by. Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming by. Zacchaeus was a short man in stature, but he wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to see who he was, and he climbed a sycamore tree where he could see Jesus for himself because he couldn't see over the crowd. And when Jesus was coming by, he still en route to Jericho. When he was coming by, the, the word say that he stopped and he looked up in the tree and he saw Zacchaeus and called him by name, said, Zacchaeus, come down. Today, salvation should come to your house because you're a son of David also. You're a son of Abraham. Okay. And I want to bless you. And Zacchaeus came down and he was convicted right at that moment. He said, Lord, if I have taken for anyone falsely, I'll give it back to him. And if I cheated anybody, i restore them fourfold. I'll give them half of my kingdom, half of my worth. If you just bless me and the Lord bless Zacchaeus and called him as one of his children and the publicans and all of them they got angry and the Pharisees and all of them they didn't want Jesus to bless Zacchaeus because he had been taking money from them and some of them said he took it in an unworthy way but Jesus knew all about him Jesus know what we got and a whole lot of us we had money on our mattress we had money all different places, and we don't want to share with nobody. But if you got the love of your heart in Christ, you open up, you can't, I know you can't give to everybody, but I know you can give to somebody. And if you can't give to mankind, give it to God. And God will bless you. Your spirit is what it is. It's how much you give, how much you have. It's the spirit you get of it. Because if you think about the woman, the widow, with the two mites, mm -hmm. gave the best that she had. Then Jesus asked the question, here it is, you got a rich man that gave a certain amount. And here there's a, a widow lady that had only two mites. And she gave the two mites. Which one do you think heaven is happy with? And he said, the woman that gave all she had said it right. You do this and you'll be blessed also. Don't count how much money you got. Count how many blessings you've been blessed with. And you'll find out the Lord will show enough. Help you as he helped the blind beggar, the widow woman, and all the different ones that came to him. Zach Hills, he's blessing this world today. And every day I see where people are doing things to help their neighbors on television. This would be a better world if we open up our hearts to be what the Lord tell us to do. Love Fellowship is only one church, but we serve only one God. And if we just do what I share, and don't worry about what everybody else is doing, and don't let them come to you saying, well, you know, Bishop so-and-so, they doing this, and Prophet so-and-so, they doing that. Uh, you tell them, Jesus told me to do this. And that's who I follow, because man's got to die. Jesus said, I'll never die as long as this world exists. And the word said, if you got Jesus in your heart, 
everything that you do, the Lord is putting on record. He know our thoughts before we think them. And we stop and ask the Lord, do Lord, show me the way, guide me on the road. Never let me go astray till I get home to God. I want to thank him for just hearing our prayers and hearing our shouts that we've been doing for 20 years. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I said, Lord, what would you have me to tell your people? After 20 years of service to you, he said, tell them don't let the crowd steal your blessings because I got enough blessings for everybody. And don't put nobody down because you find out when you're putting somebody down, you're really talking about yourself because what goes around comes around. And I'm not going to hold nobody accountable for trying to do good. Maybe the world might be a stumbling block to you. They might put blindness on your eyes, but don't you worry because I got enough blessings even for the blind man. I got enough blessings for the ones laying on their bed of affliction. The fellowship, hear this today. Let the Lord come into your life and let the Lord bless you and your family and your surroundings, not just your family but all of God's creation and let us stop talking about people, putting people down because in 20 years all of us have made mistakes. But look at the blessings the Lord has blessed us with. And we want to thank him, don't we, Deacon Stoudemire, for all the blessings he blessed us with. And that's all I have for you. I just want you to do what the Lord say and be persistent when you pray. And thank the Lord for all the many blessings he blessed us with. And let us come together as one. And thank the Lord and watch what he'll do for us. We thank you and we hope to see you as soon as we can in the presence. But if not, I'll see you on the other side. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.